Hello friends! Well, if you're here today, you're probably one of the many friends, not followers, who have been harassing me through the DMs of Instagram, asking me to start our YouTube channel. So here we are today. I know it took a long time, but come on, throw the first stone, the one who never procrastinated. And you know what? I actually think that procrastination is a good thing. Today, I'm older and wiser. Do you remember when I first started on Instagram? A couple of years have passed. I'm wiser now. I even have gray hair. You want to see it? Look at this. Uh-huh. See? Well, if you're here and you have no idea what I'm talking about, you probably ended up here through some freaky YouTube algorithm, which may mean that this is actually working. So why don't you stick around, go through this video and let me and the friends know whether this was actually a good idea. And now I'm about to blow your mind because we even have an intro. Well, enough of this procrastination talk now because I've got a job to do here, which is to tell the story of how I went from being a traumatized plane crash survivor to become Emirates' most loyal and passionate customer, flying as much as 10 flights a month just for the fun of it. Are you familiar with those sort of parents who are so passionate about something that they try and force their passions onto their children. But let me tell you about the man in my family. This is my grandfather. His name is Lauro, and he was one of the founding pilots of TAM Airline in Brazil, which by the way, is where I'm from. Well, my grandfather had this habit of performing magic tricks, so we could all gather around and he would end with candies. All that, so he could then start telling us all about his flying stories and how he used to fly low to impress my grandmother. Every trick, there was a candy. After every candy, there was a plane story. Of course, we will be there. This is my father. His name is Luis and he is not a pilot. Even though he can fly and actually has a license, he's in fact a doctor. And because he's a doctor, um, he, he spent a lot of time out of home on overnight duties which left us very little time to spend with him during the weekends. And what did he do? He took me and my brother to fly in air airplane models in the airport with his friends. Of course, we will be there. And then this is my brother Rodrigo. As you can see, totally continuing with the family tradition. Well, my brother was a little bit older, so he got brainwashed a little bit before me. And he used to also invite me to fly Microsoft Flight Simulator with him. Well, I tag along, but for some reason, my plane would always start beeping and then the windshield would, would crash. Well, apparently, that was called a stall, or at least that's what I'm told. I think I'm being a bit unfair here, so let me tell you a little bit about my mom as well. She is a very elegant woman, always dressed very nicely, and each time she came up with a new dress or shoe, my dad would compliment her and she would say, oh, I've had those forever. Well, as I grew up, I actually understood what she was doing. My dad, on the other hand, was very stingy. If he told you that he's had the clothes and shoes forever, it was probably true. But here's something I learned about men. They may not care about little things like clothes or dresses, but when they spend, they come home telling you that they just bought a new airplane. And I'm thinking, maybe a model airplane? No, wings, propeller, an actual airplane. Those things that you can get in and go flying. I remember asking my father how we could actually afford this and he will go on explaining how Airplanes are not like cars, and even if they are 20 or 30 years old, they're still very good and safe to fly. I grew up assuming that only millionaires could have airplanes, but that's not actually true. And after a couple of months of him having fun with his new toy, 
the day finally came for us to go on a flight together as a family. Mom, Dad, my brother and I, our dog even came. I was 14, but I clearly remember every detail of that day. We were picked up from school and taken straight to the aircraft. Because the flight was supposed to be four and a half hours and my dad did not want to fly into the night, he actually landed on a private runway instead of an official airport. My dad always told us that aviation is not for people who are in a hurry. But that day, he was in a hurry. The runway wasn't good. And to add to the stress of that very hot 45 degrees Celsius day, he seemed a bit distressed when he saw the amount of bags that my mom had prepared for the trip. In all fairness, the plane was for six people and we were only four. So what harm could some extra bags do? So we got in, fastened our seat belts. Mom and I were in the back and we were nervously ha holding hands while my father and my brother were up front ready for their adventure. The runway was bad. The aircraft was heavy and the tanks were full and it was a hot and humid day. We got off the ground and shortly after I could hear the same beeping noise that I used to hear when I was playing flight simulator with my brother. The plane was stalling and we were going to crash. The worst scenario possible. Low altitude and low speed. Leaving the pilot, my dad, with very little time to think and act. I still don't know how he did it. Can you imagine having to make very important decisions in such a short, limited time when having your very own family on board? Well, he managed. We hit the ground with a bang and he immediately turned and yelled at us so that we could leave the aircraft. Dad, I know it's hard to revive those memories after so many years, but you, better than anybody else, knows that the story doesn't end there. I am told that one of the first full sentences that I said as a little girl was, on my own hand, please, tells you a story of someone who would not be known to copy her father's passions. Actually, not even his profession. I am the only one in my household who did not pursue a career in healthcare. I dreamed of an international career in hospitality, and I was curious to see the world. Well, international meant flying, and flying was now a trauma. But I was not going to let a trauma steal my dreams. So after seven years of the accident, I left Brazil on a jet plane, under medication, holding my breath and closing my eyes, but going. I would come home every four months, also on a jet plane, under medication, holding my breath, closing my eyes, but flying. Flying was a torture, not a passion. Well, seven years after leaving Brazil, another career goal would bring me in front of the longest flight that I would have flown until that day, 13 and a half hours from Sao Paulo to Dubai. It was late at night, I was sleepy, but I remember every detail of that day. The music, the red hats, and the fact that the ladies on the red hats were actually giving me warm towels and economy. I slept so peacefully and for the very first time without the need for medication. I woke up with just enough time to watch one movie, Social Network. Sometimes I wonder if this was destiny telling me that that day, that music, those red hats would actually lead me to meeting so many friends not followers through a social network. Friends, I'm not going to lie. My fear of flying was not magically gone on that day. But that day was the end of an era of sad and scary memories and the beginning of an era of happy memories in a place where I felt home. Flying was easier, but not yet a passion. Seven Emirates flights later, 
Seven years ago, on the 5th of June 2013, I flew my very first Emirates Airbus A380 flight. The feeling of taking off on that giant bird completed forever the transformation process of my flying experience. So big, majestic, smooth and silent, I knew it was love. As Airbus would say, it was love at first flight. I promise, from that day onwards, I never again booked a flight out of Dubai if it was not through Emirates. I started to miss flying, the thrill of last minute trips, I started to chase tier after tier after tier of Emirates Skywards. And this is the story of how I went from fearful to freakful. 196 Emirates flights, 19.6 thousand friends not followers on Instagram, incredible memories, and I'm sure many more to come. So friends, if you stayed here until now and you'd like to hear more about my first class showers, the special Emirates inaugural, my weekend turnarounds, and everything that this is teaching me about customer loyalty, then you should subscribe now and leave a comment to let me know what you thought of this very first video. Go on, <laughs> I'm waiting. Well friends, thank you so much for joining me here today. Let's play sometime soon.